Uh, good evening, uh, fellow citizens. Well, uh, this evening I'm I'm prompted to to talk to you uh, concerning the issue of uh, load shedding in our country. Uh, this uh, morning I was uh, taken aback when there was a circular from Zesco, uh, which was uh, indicating that uh, now power will have to be will have to go for about about two hours uh, in a day. And the irony of this all is that power is going at about 0.5, like here where we are in, uh, in our place. Power goes at 0.5 and uh, it comes back at 18 hours. Meaning that the whole day, uh, people are unable to do anything productive. In other areas, it is going at 8 and coming back at 20 hours. In other areas, it, uh, power is going at about 10, coming back at uh, 22 hours. The productive hours are the hours that we are getting affected. We are having power go at a time when people should be very productive, meaning that the whole country now is coming to a close. Basically, Zambia is being closed. Basically, the country is getting closed. I think I would want to deal on three factors with Zesco. I want Zesco to consider three factors. The first factor is that the time that power is going is the time that it is prime time. Prime time in the sense that you have people running uh, barber shops, you have people running uh, saloons, you have got people running uh, all kinds of businesses, especially in our townships. And once these people have uh, no electricity, it is becoming a big challenge for them to do their business. I think this should come, this should be considered seriously by Zesco. The second issue is that the hours have been made to be long. And of course, some people will argue that indeed the water levels are low, but this is contrary to what we were promised by the president in May. The president had said the issue of uh, load shedding had been sorted out. But uh, from what we are seeing, the problem of uh, of Zesco has not been dealt with. And I wonder why the president went ahead to issue such a statement. The statement that the president made was basically reckless. He should not have said what he said. Uh, you don't assure a nation, because what comes from the president is almost sacrosanct. You don't assure a nation, and then the following day, you, uh, you somersault. You are given a different statement by your Minister of Energy. I think this is very bad. We are having a raw deal. The other issue that I would want to urge government is that while we are having these challenges of power, government has maintained the issue of exporting the same megawatts they were exporting before we had this crisis. We now have a gigantic crisis before us. Very gigantic crisis. We have a problem. And that problem must be looked at very critically. Why has government continued to export the same megawatts of power to Namibia? Why has government continued to export the same megawatts of power to South Africa? Today we are struggling just to a close. Government must quickly begin rethinking how they can best handle the issue of power outages. Coupled with that, it is important that government begins to be thinking of long-term investments in the, in the energy sector. Geothermal, uh, nuclear energy, uh, government must begin considering solar a lot, wind-propelled energy. These might be long-term, but they'll answer the challenges of the hydropower deficits. Yes, one cannot refuse that there is uh, the, there's a challenge in, uh, uh, in the Kariba with the water levels. But the president told us that the problem was the generators and that government had procured those gensets and therefore the problem was was dissolved but today we are now having 12 hours of load shedding you have got people living in the townships struggling you've got people living wherever we are living here struggling it is important that government considers this as a result of that we are going to to be consulting ourselves myself in the opposition together with my colleagues uh, we'll be consulting we'll be talking to one another uh, probably tomorrow to begin seeing at how best we can assist this government to first of all stop lying to the people of zambia and then secondly for them to stop being reactive but being proactive you can't have a government 
that is failing to tell the people of Zambia the truth. I think that should never happen. People must be told. If the president had told us in May that of the problem of power the, uh, uh, this time around, things would have all understood. But he said the problem was dealt with. And he keeps on uh, dodging the issue. There's a video going around uh, on social media, uh, which is saying, uh, those of you who are having power cuts, uh, can you raise your hand? The president is asking at a press briefing status. Clearly, the president and his team are detached from reality. It is important that this issue of ZESCO is properly, uh, is properly explained to the Zambian citizens. We just can't say no, six hours. When you are coming up with, uh, with six hours, you didn't know that the water levels were that low that you cannot, uh, you cannot sustain the six hours. Why all of a sudden, why all of a sudden have you decided to say it should be uh, 12 hours? Why? In the first place, you told us it's six hours. Hardly a week has passed. You have told us now it is uh, 12 hours. We don't know what to expect. And that 12 hours, power is not even going for 12 hours. You see power going for over 16 hours. There are some compounds, there are some homes, as we speak, who have not had power from yesterday. They have not had power. And yet, the president is telling us to say, raise your hands, those of you who are, who are still having power outages. Mr. President, we are having power outages. We are having an economic blackout because your power, your ZESCO, is, disconnect is disconnecting us during the time that we are very when we are being uh, switched off. I think ZESCO should again reconsider the times that are switching us off. Maybe they should be switching us off in the night if they want, when people are sleeping. But to be switched off during productive hours is not only unfair, but it is really depriving the country of the economic prosperity we are talking about. On one hand, this government is talking about promoting the SMEs. On the other hand, the same SMEs are being suffocated. And as we speak, foreign conglomerates, those running mines, those running uh, big industries are not affected. The ones who are being affected heavily, it's us, the consumers, and the domestic consumers. This should be looked at, and I think we have made proposals as citizens first, which government must seriously begin considering, because we cannot proceed like this. Zambia is almost closing. We are almost closing our country. Economically, it is closing, because if you cannot have power during the day, if you are going to black us out for most of the day, then what are we going to do? Because all the productive hours are gone. Then power comes. It has come just now like here where I am. Power has just come. In the next three hours, it went for 12 hours. 16 hours it went. In the next four hours, the power will be going. This should not be the case. So my appeal to government is be proactive. Study your memorandum of understanding with the countries that you signed and see how best you can adjust. Desperate times require desperate solutions. Desperate moments require a desperate uh, answers. And therefore, at a time such as this, it is paramount that government must quickly begin looking at those memorandum of understanding and see if we can make adjustments. We just can't stick to be giving them the same megawatts when your own people are suffering. I think even, when, even within the framework of the SADC power pool, to which Zambia is a signatory, it doesn't say that we should be suffering to give out power to SADC member states. When we ourselves are... Uh, are also struggling at whose expense are we doing it this the south africans who are selling power to i've got few man hours I, I, i've got few hours of uh, load shedding as compared to ourselves who are selling power the namibians who are selling power to i've got very few hours of load shedding as compared to us who are selling it's not making economic sense and i think let us wake up as government let us begin running and when we tell you this it's not out of malice we are saying this because it is important that you should begin taking your people seriously. We thank you, hope you've listened, but we are going to be monitoring this situation very closely and we are not going to be politicking for the sake of just talking. We want you, the government, to know that it is citizens that you are presiding over. It is human beings. You just don't begin changing rules and telling them half bad stories and you expect to get out with it. We will stand up to you and we'll make sure that you do what is right. We will not allow you to continue taking us for granted. We will not allow ZESCO to just wake up and begin cutting power uh, just as they wish during the productive hours of the day. Please rethink, rethink. And then if we are having these blackouts now, when it is rain season, what about when it is to be in October? In uh, rain season, we are struggling like this. What about when it will be in October? 
it will be a, I mean to be it will be a disaster in the dry season or when it is not being dry season. So we are asking government to please begin reconsidering uh, uh, the hours that you are cutting us off power. Begin considering the time that you are cutting us off power. Make us be productive. Let the people with barber shops work. Let the people with saloons work. Let the welding machines, people with welding machines work. Let people with butcheries work. Let people who are selling uh, all kinds of things that are hinging on electricity, let them work. When will they work if you don't give them a chance now? If you are load shedding them at 9 hours, you are load shedding them at 11 hours, productive hours. Begin thinking of load shedding people at 22 hours, 22 to 04. In that, people will have slept and then we will have had power during the course of the day. Zambia, we are together. We can assure you citizens that ours is not to be malicious. Ours is to provide proper checks and balances and that we should do. We are in this together. But our friends in government are beginning to be very insincere, very inconsiderate, and we will stand up to them and make them do the right thing. God bless you and may he bless this, our Republic of Zambia. I thank you.